Worship the Lord and give glory to his name. Tell the Lord you have come to learn his word. Lord, teach me your word. Lord, teach me your word. I want to know your word. God, teach me your word. Lord, teach me your word. I want to know your word. Jesus, teach me. I want to know your word, Lord. My God. Father, we have sung our prayer unto you. Teach us your word. Teach us your way. Teach us your will. Let's do this in the church to have fullness of your presence. Let's do this as individual Christians to have the fullness of your blessings. Thank you, divine. Speak to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. We're continuing with our series in obedience. I'm talking today on obedience and submission to church authority. Obedience and submission to church authority. Last week I spoke about obedience to God and to the man of God, the servant of God. But now to church authority. The people of God are addressed as a church in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament because they are the congregation of the Lord. In the New Testament, however, the church refers strictly to the body of Christ. We notice, uh, as we see in Scripture, that in both Old and New Testament, God set up administration over his own people and commands, demands, obedience and submission of his people unto the leadership of his church. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15 the Bible says But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave, I mean, to behave yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. The church of God who is alive, the living God, is the house of God. And a pattern of behavior is required in the church. Those who belong to the church are ordered to live a prescribed lifestyle to please God and to receive blessing from him 
Which church? Is it everywhere people congregate? No. It is where it is called the pillar and ground of the truth. Where the truth is preached and exercised. The truth is taught and practiced. The truth of God is demonstrated. There is a prescribed behavior in such a place which God demands his children to follow suit. And, great, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. <laughs> this God visited us in a bodily form. And when he was on earth, he, he was called Jesus. He finished his work and died as any man could would die, and, but he went back to, to heaven where he had been etern in eternity. So, behave in the house of God is different from the house of any great man. Even a great man will have a prescribed behavior in his house. How much more in the house of God? Let's see how when he brought up his people under Moses in the Old Testament how were they administered How did they behave? We saw that under the administration of Moses, the following was the administrative pattern set up by God Himself. He brought the wisdom, He brought He gave the instruction, He gave the organization, He gave the leadership. Exodus chapter 18 verse 21 to 26 Exodus chapter 18 verse 21 to 26 Moreover thou shalt provide out of all the people able men such as fear God men of truth hating covetousness and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee, if thou shalt do this thing. And God commanded Saul. The advice came through Moses' father-in-law, but he subjected his advice to the will of God. It is when God accepts this advice that you carry it out. Because I'm not giving you uh, ultimatum. I'm not giving you final word. There's he that has the final word. He's the God of knowledge wisdom and understanding he is also the god of time the, that knows the right time a thing is to be done so wait for him although i've given you this counsel seek his face if he accepts it and commands you to go ahead it came from him through me yes and verse 24 so moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he had said and Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made them heads over people, over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And they judged the people at all seasons. They had causes they brought unto Moses, but, the, the, but every small matter they judged themselves. So you can see the organization of the church 
is the working of God that we have branch churches all working under one man they are scattered over the city various churches in various uh, districts of the city quarters of the city or local governments of the state regions all over or in the nation or the whole world but they have their own leaders leaders that will control them and these leaders are under leaders until they are under the final human leader who then was Moses this remains the order of the church organization of the church up to this time various denominations adopt this style yes acceptable style so which means therefore that the authority rests on various leaders according to their own leadership assignment according to the authority given to them by the final authority and the people were to submit to them to obey them and they too to obey those that are higher than them look at it in the book of first peter chapter 5 first peter chapter 5 i read verse 5 and 6 likewise here younger submit yourselves unto the elder yeah all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility for god resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of god that he may exalt you in due time so pastors and leaders learn to respect one another recognize those who are senior to you and give them their respect angels respect the ranks so do so in the church of god in numbers chapter 11 verse 16 and 17 numbers chapter 11 verse 16 and 17 the bible says and the lord said unto moses gather unto me 70 men of the elders of israel whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people and officers over them and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation that they may stand there with thee and i will come down and talk with thee there and i will take of the spirit which is upon thee and will put it upon them and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee that thou bear it not thyself alone can you see god in fact moses even had to complain to god and said in verse 14 i am not able to bear all these people alone because it is too heavy for me the pastor the general overseer general superintendent or whatever is the title given to the uh, leading pastor cannot do the work alone especially when the work has grown people are required to do the work along with him see the complaint of moses to god i am looking for people the unfortunate thing is you will look for people you will not find who will do this thing for me this man is taking excuse that one is taking excuse the other person that is taking excuse the zeal of the lord is not in them you are in the house of god to be useful but you're not ready to be useful you're not interested to be useful you are a big man well built man with beautiful voice or a woman with beautiful appearance suitable but not ready to be king not ready to rule not ready to pastor not ready to take assignment can you see and that makes the man of god in the overall complaining to god how will god feel that you are there you are like the fig tree 
that Jesus saw it in time of hung, his hunger and thought he would find figs there by reason of the leaves. Not all fig trees produce leaves like that particular one at that season. But it looked promising. The Lord went there. I will be helped by this tree. He went and found no fruit. Was he happy with the tree? What did he do to it? He cursed it. You are just there cumbering the ground for nothing. Making promises, vain promises. Your creator came to use you. He find nothing in you. Nothing came out. And yet you look promising. You occupy position. No man shall eat fruit of thee. Hence fought forever. What are you for? To be used by God. But why are you not interested? Why are you avoiding? Because of your avoiding, the church is dying. We are putting the church into the hands of unbelievers. Because who is there to sustain these people? People, the unbelievers now are coming in to wreck the church. And while children of God are sitting down, doing nothing, not knowing that their own life has been taken away from them. Eternal life has been removed from them. Because they are not useful. They are not ready to bless their creator. They are not ready to support the cause of their creator. The gold is not available. So the brass is now the one to replace the temple. That is what is happening. Repent of this thy deed. Otherwise, you won't find yourself in heaven. What are you going to do in heaven? What have you done to qualify for it? When you are avoiding the conditions of heaven. You are avoiding what is required of you by the God of heaven. Serve me. You say you are not ready to serve him. So please awake both men and women. Awake to your responsibility. Born again, righteous and holy. Awake. Support the work. Support the leadership of the work. And let's do this work. That Satan does not send his men to take over. If the drivers who can drive refuse to drive, immature people, including robbers, will enter the vehicle and be driving people. Will it be well for the people? Why then you who can drive refuse to drive? So that is what we need to understand. In the book of Numbers, chapter 27, verse 12 to 23. Numbers 27, verse 12 to 23. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Get thee up into this mount, Abarim, and see the land which I have given unto the children of Israel. And when thou hast seen it, thou also shalt be gathered unto thy people, as Aaron thy brother was gathered. For ye rebelled against my commandment in the desert of Zin, in the strife of the congregation, to sanctify me at the water before their eyes, that is, the water of Meribah in Kadesh, in the, in the wilderness of Zin. Now, can you see, we must be very careful. We who are leading, we who are in final authority in a particular arm of the church, we must be very careful that we do not offend God. He will not spare us. Anointing is different from holiness. Anointing means you were chosen to do this. Holiness means you will be qualified to go to heaven and see God if you have it. God can give you anointing to do work but deny you heaven because you do the work in a lie. You do the work in anger. You do the work in stubbornness. You do the work in pride. Do the work anyway. The Lord is blessing the world, not you. He will give you food to eat, to have, give you ability to do the work. He will give you a car to ride, a house to live on. He will give you all the support required for the work's sake. For the work's sake. But for heaven, no, because you are not qualified. You are not holy. You are not righteous before him. You are not holy. So you cannot go. So, but as for this Moses, what he promised was the earth, the land of Canaan. He wanted to lay example for those whose promise shall be heaven. He said, I told you I'm taking you 
to the land of Canaan. That you people will take the, this man to the land of Canaan. But because you did what you did, I would deprive you of the land of Canaan. However, because you have been faithful actually, I will want you to see the land of Canaan with your eyes. You will not go there. You are going to die. But for heaven, since that sin, you didn't do it anymore. You didn't commit that type of thing again. I have forgiven it. So, but heaven you will go to. Land of Canaan, just see it. You will not go there. So when this was told Moses, he said in verse 15, And Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. You could be serving idols, but the idol is not the God of your spirit. He didn't create your spirit. The person that created your spirit is God, the God of heaven. So he is the God of the spirit of all flesh, every human being. He created them. You may not honor him. <laughs> you don't. But a time will come, you will bow before him. The spirit in you will bow to confess. Either after that to hell or to heaven. Depending on whether you obey him or not. Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. Set a man. There must be a man. Why are we full of envy and jealousy? This is the way of God. Why are you disturbing a man? Why did they choose you? If God, it is his pattern that a man must be chosen. It's only one person that should rule the country. It's no man. The rest submit however great you are when joshua was chosen as the man caleb as intelligent zealous as you heard of him submitted to joshua let this thing be in the house of god that ye may know how ye should behave in the house of god no strive for position no struggle no envy no jealousy but all submissive to the man God has chosen, which may go out before them and which may go in before them, meaning take decisions over them of what to do and what not to do, and which may lead them out and which may bring them in that the congregation of the Lord be not a sheep which have no shepherd. It is just, just imagine sheep without shepherd, how they scatter. Every person doing according to what he wants, living in the way he wants to live. No. Congregation of the Lord should not be like that. In the house of God, don't do your own will. Don't live your own life. Don't choose your own thing. God, does, that's not how behavior should be. There is a man that should dictate to you the way of God to follow. There is a man the Lord uses to speak to, to speak to his own sheep. If you are his sheep, you will hear the voice of the Lord as he speaks through the leadership. So you who feel you are not under any leader. You are in the church, but nobody is leading you. You are on your own. You can take, you cannot take the words of the leader. You are not in the church of Christ for heaven. You are not. Because you are not behaving according to the will of God. You know, in our song, we say, teach us your word. Teach us your way. Teach us your will. You are not behaving in the will of God. Don't make your choice. Don't do the things you like. Seek the mind of God. And the Lord puts it in the hand of a leader. Just imagine. I am here. Uh, teaching the world. And you are there. Reading a book. Unconnected to what I am teaching. What are you reading the book about? You don't want to hear my word? Then you, are you here as a member of the congregation? I was moving around in the morning and I saw one of the worshippers 
sitting down as a great message was going on I saw earpiece in the ears sitting down the eyes could be looking to the screen but the ears are occupied with another thing wonderful are you here what are you doing whatever you have earpiece to do with to do with earpiece is not in the church you came from morning all through to the afternoon earpiece in your two ears why when the message of God is going on what do you want to show you are showing that you are not interested in what is going on you have blocked your ears exactly the scripture says it that some people do that look at it in the book of Isaiah chapter 6 Isaiah chapter 6 I read verse 9 the Bible says and he said go and tell these people hear ye indeed but understand not why something is blocking your ears you're hearing sound but you will not pick it hear ye indeed but understand not and see ye indeed but perceive not you're seeing whatever image you're seeing and the lips are moving you don't know what he's saying why make the heart of these people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed here these people have gone into apostasy why bother them to tell go and block their ears go and close their eyes because what I'm saying has no meaning to their lives or else in Matthew chapter 13 Matthew chapter 13 verse 13 therefore speak I to them in parables because they seeing see not and hearing they hear you hear not neither do they understand and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah which said by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand and seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive for these people's heart is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes have they closed lest at any time they should see with their, ear, with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them here they did it purposely they don't want to hear that's why they block their ears they don't want to see they don't even want to see that's what they put away, put away their eyes from them why they don't want why i will be guilty if i hear i've made up my mind to do evil i've made up my mind to leave the lord i don't want to be convicted of the decision i've taken so i don't want to hear i block my ears it happened like that and i could see somebody practical in the church you may have your reason I, know, I don't know what reason can make you come to the church with earpiece in your ears no reason I try to look for reasons why am I excuse you I have not found I have not found and you are not a new person in the church else I would have said these are the people who don't know God who in their churches turn it into a music ground and have nothing to gain from their pastors if you were a new person I would have charged you with that but i will go and tell you to remove that otherwise why are you here in this church but for you to be an older person and do that go to god otherwise your case has gone far so that's what we are saying that the lord raised up a man hear him listen to him don't have your own way i shouldn't be preaching you're preaching another message two of you are talking when the word of god is going on i've checked you people in the media i said don't fill yourself up in the media room and be going engaging into another discussion when the word of god is going on that's why you can't perform you can't pray you are not convicted you can do media work and going to sin because you're not hearing 
listen to one man that the congregation of the Lord be not a sheep having no shepherd that is what Moses prayed now verse 18 and the Lord said unto Moses take thee Joshua the son of Nun a man in whom is the spirit and laid an hand upon him and set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their side and thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him that all the congregation of the, Lord, of the children of Israel may be obedient and he shall stand before Eleazar the priest who shall ask counsel for him after the judgment of the urine before the Lord at his word shall they go out and at his word shall they come in both he and all the children of Israel with him even all the congregation this is God there must be a leader and that is what Moses did that was leadership under Moses and God himself magnified Joshua Look at it in Joshua chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3. I read verse 7. Joshua chapter 3. Verse 7. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel that they may know that as I was with Moses so I will be with thee can you see God's protection over his leader the man the Lord chose he will support and stand by him above you who are under him above you who are his parents over him above you who are colleagues with him Maybe ah, we went to Bible school together. Oh, we, we grew up together. The anointing makes the difference. You can't say because you are uh, a friend to the president before he became a president. Now you are equal to him. As a president, no, there's a big gap. If he goes, Siren will follow him. Will Siren follow you? If he makes a noise, everybody will gather. Will you make a noise and everybody will gather? Respect the president. Respect the man of God. Even if he's small, he's younger than you. Respect the woman of God. Even if you're older. I, nothing is wrong to address her, my mother. That's the name in the church. Showing mother in the Lord because the one shepherding you. What's wrong to say, my mother? Ah, he's a small child. Small child in Christ. So much child in the Lord. David was too small for his elder brothers to address him king. So please follow scripture. Do it in Bible way to show that even I myself as far as big and old, I am under you. The Lord raise you up. Jesus went to John the Baptist. Say, Are you coming to me? Say, I suffer it to be so. The Lord called you. In fact, I was the Lord that called you. And I have to come to you because the mantle is in your hand. So first it to be so for righteousness sake. So therefore, respect people in the church. Respect people. Come down. And those who are up there should go up there. Come. When a driver is carrying you and you big man, you're sitting in the vehicle, do you go and take over? Or you say, driver is doing his work. I sit quietly and watch him. Then why don't you sit quietly and watch the pastor? Why are you competing? That's the word you need to learn. So, Joshua, this day I will magnify you. The pastor is in a position of magnification. By God himself. The man of God is magnified by God. Because if he does not do so, he won't have the confidence to do the work. He will be too afraid to speak the truth. The people will threaten him and so he can't speak the truth. He make, I will make you a God unto Pharaoh. I will make you a God unto Pharaoh. I will make you a God, Pharaoh, I mean, 
Aaron, your elder brother, shall be your prophet. But you are the, you are the God. Aaron will be your prophet. This is God. So let's know how to behave ourselves in the house of God. Otherwise, you will despise your brother because he is my general brother. You will despise your child. We will look at this child. When I was parking the excreta from you, did you understand? You will be missing heaven by that. That thou might, thou ought to know how you should behave yourself in the house of God the pillar and the ground of the truth not so we want to understand more how god directed leadership in the old testament part of his own church now see leadership in the new testament church leadership and authority in the new testament in the book of matthew chapter 18 verse 15 to 18 matthew chapter 18 verse 15 to 18 the bible tells us here saying moreover if thy brother shall trespass against thee go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone if he shall hear thee thou hast gained thy brother but if he will not hear thee then take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established and if he shall neglect to hear them tell it unto the church that if he but if he neglect to hear the church let him be unto thee as an hidden man and a publican authority put in the church who what makes up the leadership of the church the authority of the church. What makes up that authority? In Acts of Apostles, chapter 15. Acts of Apostles, chapter 15 from verse 4 to verse 6. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders. And they declared all things that God had done unto them. But they rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Verse 6 And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. Everybody say, and the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. This is the authority of the church. Apostles and elders. They are the authority. When they say, the, Lord, the Bible says, or Jesus said, tell it to the church. He's talking about this. And if you look at it, Peter was their leader. Leader over the apostles and elders. Peter was then the chief apostle. Paul had not been, con okay, Paul had just been converted, but was still under Peter. Because Peter, the apostles in Jerusalem still ruled. Peter still ruled the church. Others were under him, subject to him. And now, these are the people that should take decision over your life, over any matter that concerns you in the church. Now, in case you are one of them, for you to come up to take decision, binding decision, you must qualify in your life. Because in chapter 18, verse 18 of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 18, Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The apostles leadership of the church that which they agree heaven will agree with it that which they decree heaven will be de will decree the same thing if you are rejected by the church don't think you'll find a place another place where you can be accepted 
heaven has rejected you if you are excommunicated by the church don't think you'll find a church anywhere or that you'll find your own heaven has excommunicated you i'm telling you the truth i'm talking so if this be this be so the church that god will vest this power on is not a casual church the leadership that god will vest this power on should not be casual leadership of drunkards thieves witches and wizards should not be casual leadership of those who take bribes those who tell lies those who are afraid of me those who are timid lacking boldness those who are ignorant of truth those who don't know righteousness they are not partaking in holiness this cannot be a church that god will invest in so when the bible talks about the authority of the church it's not every church because not every people know him not all elders know him not all leaders know him not all uh, overseers bishops superintendents of, or what we call them senior pastors know him he's talking about the righteous church the pillar and the ground of the truth hence man of god righteousness is demanded of you to be the one presiding over the church of christ in the book of second samuel chapter 23 second samuel chapter 23 verse 1 to verse 3 the bible says now this be the last words of david David, the son of Jesse, said, And the man who was raised up on her, the anointed of God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel, said, The Spirit of the Lord spoke, spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me, he that ruled over all men, ruled over men, must be just ruling in the fear of God. That's what the Lord told me. Because they will see me in you. Your word and decree shall be established by me. I make the people to see me in you. Your word will not be casual. Therefore, be just and holy. To represent me for be ye holy for i the lord am holy pastor you must be holy you must be just you must know god you must know the mind of god otherwise how will you lead these people the blind cannot lead the blind both shall fall into the ditch you'll be siding people in your judgment you become afraid of men in your judgment. You will do favoritism. You will receive bribe. You will side your family. You will side your tribe. You will side your friends. Because the power of righteousness you don't have. Satan will threaten you and you will give up. Be holy. He that ruled. He that ruled over men must be just. Ruling in the fear of God. Church leaders must be people given to truth, righteousness, and holiness in order to adequately represent God in the matters of instruction, leadership, and justice and among the people of God. The qualities in leadership Moses chose was specified. Look at it in Exodus chapter 18, verse 21. Exodus chapter 18 verse 21 moreover thou shalt provide out of all the people able men such as fear God number two men of truth number three hating covetousness fear God born again men of truth sanctify them by thy truth Thy word is truth. Hating covetousness. People who don't have the love of money in their hearts. 
who are not judging for rewards, for fav favoritism. Set them over the people. So it is righteous people the Lord will commit this thing to. The Lord will commit his world, his own people, into righteous hands. They are, they are eternal souls, very sensitive. Satan is doing everything to destroy them. Will the Lord be careless in choosing someone that will take over them? Paul said, we have sinned with him. One whose testimony is known in the church of God for faithfulness. We have sinned with titles to go to you and collect money so that nobody will abuse what you're doing for God. The money you're giving to God, it should not get lost in the hands of somebody that will be telling stories. We were coming on the way, armed robbers met with us. They collected the money, but they didn't beat us. Not those type of people. Faithful people, righteous people are the ones that are required to be leaders among the people of God. Moses exhorted them to righteous, righteousness and justice in dealing with the people of God in Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 15 to 18 Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 15 to verse 18 the Bible tells us here saying so I took the chief of your father of your tribes wise men and none and made them heads over you captains over thousands and captains over hundreds and captains over fifties and captains over tens and officers among you among your tribes and I charged your judges at that time saying hear the causes between your brethren and judge righteously between every man and his brother and the stranger that is with you. Pastor, holiness revival movement overseers and leaders, be just in your pastoral duty. Favor no woman for her beauty. Favor no man for his money. Disfavor no man in, in tribal battles or tribal whatever is going on. It's not of my tribe. They are against my tribe. Disfavor no man. Disfavor no man because he hates your family or your family hates him. Disfavor no man. That is the word I charge your judges. Here, the curse is between your brethren and judge righteously between every man and his brother. And the stranger that is with, the, with him. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment. This is a matter we need grace. Because some people are big and yet they are not ready to comply to total world. They are, mere, they are earthly rulers, earthly big, big men. They are not ready to comply. And you might not have the boldness to correct them. It will affect others. A little level, level the whole long. Because you don't have the courage, you must pray for courage. That you have respect of no person. He is not the key to heaven. It's not the way to heaven. It was not he that died for the, for the church. Overcome him. Overcome his spirit. Go to the God of all spirits to submit his spirit under you. That you speak to every man. No favoritism. Yes. But ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the, faces, the face of man, for the judgment is God. You are doing that thing representatively. The way God will do it in the church, pastor, do it. Ask him to empower you to do it, because the judgment is God's. Ask God to pass through you to do it. Go and take time to pray and plead with him. He should show you exactly. Don't favor any man. Don't pity any person that I shall not pity. That's what the Lord is saying. That thy are. Neither shall thou conceal the matter. Don't hide truth. Don't hide, make a man escape discipline that is worthy of it. Don't. 
Otherwise, you won't be representing God and you'll be affecting the church of God. You, people will be believing in a liar and thinking that it is God speaking, just as it's happening in other churches now. They believe in liars. And the thing is their God that is speaking. My pastor says I should suck this handkerchief and drink and then the matter will be over. My pastor says I should give him some money and that he's going to take this money to God and pray and fast and that the matter will be over. They deceive them. Don't be a deceiver. Speak truth. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me and I will hear it. Please don't be proud. It's not a show of knowledge. Eh, let the people know that I am all in all. Even if you are the general overseer of that church, the church is one. And a matter higher than you comes to you. Recognize that. Though you are general overseer, general whichever, there are general overseers of general overseers. Nigeria is a president. has president. Ghana has. Cameroon has. Another country, South Tomia principle, about 50, um, 500 people or whatever, 500,000 people or so. They also have president. But presidents know which president to submit to. Are we not submitting to America? Because presidents are upon presidents. Pastors are over pastors. Overseers, over overseers. Don't damn somebody's soul and say, if I refer him to another pastor, to, he, they would laugh me and say our pastor is not sufficient is it pride oh you are going to use pride pride go ahead before you fall you will, not see the, you will not see God you are using your pride to ring the people of God how much more of you a overseer in holiness movement a coordinator in holiness movement a matter is higher than you instead of taking it up to higher authority because God distributes grace according to to the assignment. The talents were not all the same. Some were given five talents, some three, some one. Take it to the man that has higher talents. No, uh, I will be belittled before this person. You won't make heaven because you are destroying the work of God through pride. Submit one to another. So that's what the word of God is saying. The cause that is too hard for you, direct to me. Let me see you calling me because you have a cause that is too hard for you. I would say you are following scripture. I would say you are a holy man. That is what the scripture is telling us. Recognize it. Follow it. This is justice. And I commanded you at that time all the things which ye should do. Yeah. Do righteousness. Do righteousness. King Jehoshaphat also exhorted the judges and the priests under him to be holy and to deal righteously over the people that come to them. Second Chronicles chapter four, chapter nineteen. Second Chronicles chapter nineteen, verse four to eleven. Second Chronicles chapter nineteen, verse four to. 11. And Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem and he went out again, again through the people from Beersheba to Mount Ephraim and brought them back unto the Lord God of their fathers. And he set judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Judah, city by city, and said to the judges, Take heed. I'm talking to the pastors. I'm talking to the overseers. I'm talking to the co coordinators, house leaders. Take it! What you do, what you do in your family, you are an example. What you do to individuals in the church, you are an example. What you do to women, how you react, relate with them. Be careful! You are a light, an example. A city set on a hill that is being seen. Take it, your demeanor, disposition, even when you are rebuking people. Take it of your anger. People are watching you. Make sure you do not act in the flesh. Make sure you are not overtaken in wrath, in carnality, to show forth your nakedness 
I, he exhorted them. He said, take it. Yes. Take it. What ye do? For ye judge not for man. You're not judging to please any man. Yes. Like the judges of the earth. They are judges to please somebody who has given them money. They are judging, judging to please somebody who has reported a man to them. They are judging, but ye judge not for man, but for the Lord who is with you in the judgment. And he is seeing where you are deviating. He is seeing the thoughts that Satan is bringing into your heart and you are picking them. The Lord is with you in the judgment. He said, do it for me. It's only I am not physical. It's that I write letters to people and the admin officer signs for me, but I'm responsible for those letters. As, didn't he sign for Pastor Porica, the international director? I'm responsible. But you are signing for me. It's the rule. You are doing this judgment for me, your God, because I'm not physical. They cannot hear my voice physical. You are representing me and I'm here watching. Make sure. Do it exactly as I put it in your heart. Do it exactly as I reveal it to you. That is what the Lord is saying. Wherefore, now, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take it and do it. Don't avoid it because I don't want to be the one to condemn this man. I don't want to shame this man. I don't want to embarrass this man. You are telling God that you, you, should, you shouldn't have been the leader. Who will do it? Who will do it? When Peter, as in the church history, said they should not, was well, running away from crucifixion. No. As he was running away from where they wanted to crucify him, Jesus was going to where he was running away from. My Lord, where are you going? I'm going to be crucified the second time. Ah, uh -uh. No, you refuse. See, you're running away now. I'm going back there. Ah. You mean the Lord should come back the second time? Because if it were the Lord, he wouldn't respect person. If it were the Lord, he wouldn't have pitied person because he created all souls and mine. The soul that sinned, it shall die. And now I put the judgment in your hand. You are running away. He said, take it. Do it. Make sure you do it. Make sure you do justice in the house of God. The church of the living God. Yeah. He said, for there is no iniquity with the Lord our God. Listen. People may judge you with partiality. Do it as the Lord told you. They shall come to know that there is no iniquity in your life. Because you did what God told you to do. You spoke what God told you to speak. They judge it against you. They shall come to know there is no iniquity with the Lord your God. If you use your own method, there will be iniquity. And they will condemn you rightly because you relapse into the flesh. There is no iniquity with the Lord your God. No taking of gifts, bribe. No taking of bribes. Don't take bribe. As they do in the world. Don't do it. They are building houses for them. They are buying cars for them. The cars that will chalk their conscience. They are giving them large sum of money. Money many of them will not touch until they have died. Money that cannot heal the sickness in their body. So be careful. And he charged them. I mean, verse 8. Moreover, in Jerusalem did Jehoshaphat said of the Levites and of the priests and of the chief of the fathers of Israel for the judgment of the Lord and for controversies when they returned to Jerusalem. And he charged them saying, Thus shall ye do in the fear of the Lord faithfully and with a perfect heart. And what cause soever shall come to you of your brethren that dwell in their cities, between blood and blood, between law and commandment, statutes and judgments, ye shall even warn them that they trespass not against the Lord. And so wrath come upon you and your brethren. This do, and ye shall not trespass. If you do what is wrong, anger will come on you. 
And behold, Amaria, the chief priest, is over you in all matters of the Lord. There is a leader. Even in sections, there are leaders. So that things should be done decently and in order. In prayer warrior, there is a leader. Among the choir, there is a leader. Among the ushers, there is a leader. That you submit to these leaders. And behold, Amaria, the chief priest, is over you in all matters of the Lord. And Zebadiah, the son of Ishmael, the ruler of the house of Judah, for all the king's matters, also the Levites shall be officers before you. Deal courageously, and the Lord shall be with the good. He shall deal with the bad, but he shall bless the good. That is the word, exhortation to the leaders. Now, obedience and submission to God and the leadership of the church. Can you see who the leaders are? Can you see who they are? God invested much in the righteous leader. Submission to and obedience to the church leadership is submission to God. The word of the leader is the word of God. Except iniquity is 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 in them except the sinners except they spoke sin completely otherwise the word they speak is the word of god look at it in numbers chapter 27 numbers chapter 27 yes and i read verse 21 and he shall stand before Eliezer the priest who shall ask counsel for him after the judgment of Urim before the Lord now everybody repeat this at his word shall they go out say it and at his word shall they come in both he and all the children of Israel with him even all the congregation now actually it is at the word of God you do all things but the Lord put his word in his mouth at his word who makes you to despise the word of a leader we learn Christianity under faithful leaders and we take their words to be the word of God. When a leader speaks, we say, God has spoken. That's why we go to, the council, to seek counsel from them. We go to seek their opinion. Except the Holy Spirit will come to tell you differently. Except the Holy Spirit. And you must verify over and over. Otherwise, the word of a leader is the word of God. How should the leader speak and you don't take it? He said, let's go. You're not going. Come here. You're not coming. Stop that. You will not stop. Do this. You will not do. You're not, you not in the sheepfold of God. You are not among those he's leading to heaven. Because God put this authority in his mouth. And expects Total submission. Everybody, the whole congregation. Whole. Are you bigger? Are you bigger than anybody? Are you older? More educated? More qualified? Why are others behaving, submitting, and you're not? Are you higher than God? What are you going to tell God now? I belittle your leader. And God is in the leader. He said, I'm with you. I am with you in the leadership over the church. He's the one dictating it. So, that is why you must be very careful. In 2 Chronicles chapter 19, verse 6 and 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 19, verse 6 and verse 7. And said to the judges, Take heed what ye do, 
for ye judge not for man but for the Lord who is with you in the judgment God is there do you know that God is there I told a story real one that happened in River State the coordinator of River State gathered people in judgment against the chapter leader of Amok. While the judgment was going on, I was not there. It was a civil way in Bayelsa. They were doing this thing in River State. The coordinator of Amok, is it Amok, stood up, carried his back, and walked away. The Lord spoke to me in Bayelsa. He said, he narrated the story. When the River State coordinator were there with the leadership of the church, I was there and Satan was there. When the chapter leader of Omar rose up, carried his back and walked away, Satan looked at me. Have you seen? You're boasting that he's your own. This is mine. He said, it's to give shame to the Lord. Go and discipline him. I was I there? I'm talking about church of the living God. Where the presence of God is. Do you do it casually with a place like this? The Lord is here. He is with me in the preaching. I didn't tell you it we were in the uh, um, Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast, in one of the places there, preaching. The Lord spoke to my wife. I am here. So, You're here, Lord? Yes, I'm here. Ah, where are you? Please, show me yourself, Lord, if you're here. He you said, I am in the process of preaching. Suddenly, he saw two faces. My face facing congregation, the Lord's face facing her with a blue eye, with blue eyes. Wonderful. This is brief. To show you, this man is not doing this thing alone. I am there. Is then you will be stubborn to me and think you serve God. Which God? Stubborn to my ways. I'm not saying this thing to make you afraid, but I must speak reality. Why must you die? Why must you die out of ignorance? Why? Is your soul not precious? You're listening to that devil, that old serpent, the dragoon, that with whose tail a tenth of the angels fell from heaven. He wants to crush you. I should keep quiet. I should not wake you up from dead. So that's the matter. Submission. The Lord is with us in the judgment. God has committed you to the church leadership to care for your souls. Yes. And has commanded that you obey completely the word of the Lord that comes from the leadership. Because he is passing through the leadership to lead the church. Look at it in Deuteronomy chapter 17. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 9 to verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 8. If there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment between blood and blood, between plea and plea, and between stroke and stroke, being matters of controversy within thy gates, then shall thou arise and get thee up into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt come unto the priests, the Levites, and unto the judge that shall be in those days, and inquire. And they shall show thee the sentence of judgment. And thou shalt do according to the sentence which they of that place, which the Lord shall choose, shall show thee. 
and thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee. The Lord has set up this true mean of God, true man of God, to take care of you. Any matter that arises, that comes to them, they will find out the answer I will give them. And whatever they tell you to be the position, that's the final position in the church. Submit to it. That which the law steers them to give you, submit to it. Don't say God must reveal to you also stubborn spirit. Those are the spirits you will be dealing with in hell that cannot obey the word. Proud men. God must tell me also. God must tell you. God must tell you. Who told you your name? Is it God or your parents? As you grew up, you were hearing your name. Who told you? Even if God brought it directly, he would tell another person to tell you. A child never names himself. God must use some other people to decree justice and tell you his position over your life. Must you ask him to tell you? Is that his way? He chooses what he does according to his will among the inhabitants of men. Therefore, stay off your pride. The, what the inhabitants of that place shall tell you, that shall ye do. And he continues. According to the sentence, of the law which they shall teach thee and according to the judgment which they shall tell thee thou shalt do thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall show thee to the right hand nor to the left don't go to another people and say uh, what do you say <laughs> and the people say leave what your people are saying they're putting you people in bondage Somebody called me and said, uh, I went to YA to confess my, to do my restitution. So I met somebody who told me, oh, you know, we, people can commit sin. Oh, you're convicted? Go and tell your God that you are sorry. But I have nothing against you. If God has forgiven you, what am I? I said, who told you that? Is it the person who has the power to forgive that told you that? Because some boys, some girls went to Wayek office too. So when they went, they go, they get, they get man, asked them, what do you want? They said, we cheated in our exam and we want to come and, uh, uh, and do our restitution. What is restitution? We want to come and confess our sins to leadership. In fact, if possible, submit our certificate. Oh, okay. You are forgiven. Don't bother. You are forgiven. We are forgiving you. Will they go and say they are forgiving them? Get man should forgive somebody. Was get man there when you were writing the exam? Does he know the principle of exam? Does he know the law of exam? Does he has he weighed the type of sin you did? What about if somebody forged the result for you? What if somebody wrote it for you? They forgive you? Forgive you that you have a, a true foundation? Is there any moral society that will forgive a evil? If somebody, who, he didn't write an exam. They say, uh, they, they just go and stamp a certificate and give him. And they say, we forgive you, go and do it. Is there any society? Yes, they can forgive. Depending on the nature of the error. The amount of the error. They can consider this does not amount to anything. We can sympathize with you. But there is a thing that you just have to do another thing. I write back the exam. So, it must be, it has to be constituted as forgiveness. Why? Whomsoever ye forgive, I forgive also. Then, you, that person should forgive according to my principle. He must have the power to forgive. You must reach the people who have the power to forgive. And not a wayside man. So, if the judges of the church have taken decision, this is the, what you should do. This is what is to be, not to be done. And you go to another wayside preacher. 
And the preacher said, ah, leave your church. Uh, this one, even God of you understand. You say, uh, God, another person has told me, you are a sinner. You don't want justice. You don't want truth. You are running away from truth. That's why you are looking for cheap ground. And the cheap, they say, cheap things swells, cheap things swell the stomach. That's what he said. Cheap things would, would damage your life. You think you have been forgiven when you are really not because you didn't follow the right course. I, I gave the example. I said, put it into writing and send again. Let me know. That writing should reach the person who has the power to forgive and let them forgive you in writing. We know that you, are, you have evidence. We know you are forgiven. If you write and they didn't reply. Write the second time if they didn't reply. Write the third time if they didn't reply. Okay, then you are forgiven. Because from the mouth of two or three witnesses, every matter is established. So, these are principles we should follow. Now, again, look at what the Lord is saying. Verse 12. And the man that will do presumptuously and will not hearken unto the priest that standed to minister there, before the Lord thy God, unto the judge, even that man shall die. And thou shalt put away the evil from Israel. And all the people shall hear and fear and do no more presumptuously. The man of God gave a judgment. You ignore it. You are dead. You are a dead man. God said you are dead. Oh, it's not in the Old Testament for them to stone you with stones, but dead has started. You will be decaying until you vanish from the earth. That's the voice of God. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. People are stubborn. The swallows frog, swallows thought that whatever they're teaching in the word of God, you won't hear. You block your ears from hearing them because you are ready to transgress. You are ready to die. You will die. Many people better than you have died. Greater than you have died. More intelligent. More stubborn. So be careful. Why must you die? Why must you not be diligent with the Lord your God? You are in a church where truth is taught clearly with scriptures. God gave you a man of God. You don't value him. So that is the word of God. Yes. God has committed you to the church, church leadership, to care for your soul. Obey and submit fully to the righteous decisions of the church for the success of your work with God on earth and hope of, of eternal life. Acts chapter 20, verse 27 to 32. Acts chapter 20. Verse 27 to 32. For I have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock also of your own selves may, shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears and now brethren I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an in Inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I make this word clear. I give this word to you to protect you, to direct you, to restore you, to establish you, and to give you eternal life. God has made me overseer over you. God has made us overseer over you. And we know what the devil is doing. False preachers, false brethren, stubborn people, even within the church. How much more outside the church? Those who have left and are backing over there. Backing at the gates of hell. Because they are already near it to drop inside. They are backing to get you out. To edify you. And you are listening to them. 
You are pleasing them. You are reporting to them for your harm. This Satan. You people have not devised devise Satan yet. You have not been able to design Satan yet. Are you ignorant of his devices? Why is he just picking anybody he wants? Look at it in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 13. The Bible tells us. Hebrews 13. I read verse, verse, verse 7. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Follow them. Follow their faith. Verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you. Obey them. And submit yourselves. God gave them the rule over you. That you may don't a sheep having no shepherd. God raised them up to be shepherd over you. For they watch for your souls. Their eyes are upon you. You are moving around. You are checking. Are you hearing? Are you sleeping? Are you doing what? Stand up. Please go and stand at the back. Open up your eyes. Please. Don't, call, don't talk. Be, be listening to the word. They watch for your souls. Are you paying money for it? They are doing so because God raised them up for that purpose. As they the must give account. We must give account. Let's do our best that when you go, God should know that our hands are clean. Our hearts are pure. We want to do our best. Yes. They must give account. That they may do it with joy and not with grief. The Lord said, I repented that I met these people. I repented. I repented that I met Saul to be king. I repent. I'm sorry. It's a grief. It's a grief. Rebecca said, Let not Jacob marry among these Canaanitish, Canaanitish women. The Esau had married Canaanitish women. They are a grief to me. Women that are grief to their mother, mother-in-law, grief to their husbands. Oh, I regret marrying you. Oh, husband being grief to the wives. I regret marrying you. Let not your life be a grief to the leadership of the church. The Lord is the one telling you. He's, he's crying. He's mourning. He's in pain. He's restless. He cannot sleep. What have I happened? What happened to? What did I do, God? What? Why are you causing the leader to do like this? Is up. He said that they may do it with joy and not with grief. Why? Because it is for that is unprofitable for you. No gain. It's unprofitable. You won't gain. God will not bless you. Those all those your arguments have no meaning. That is what the word of God is saying. When the church excommunicates a hardened sinner, being a righteous and holy church by the leadership, as the word of God has told us, as I've shown from scripture, then have nothing to do with that person. The church sat together in the name of the Lord and by the Holy Ghost examined a case and said, excommunication drive out of the church is the judgment mean for this person you want to come and show that you are more righteous than God you are more righteous than the church that you don't bother look at it in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you from verse 1 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1 all through to verse 13. And such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife, and ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned, that he that had done this deed might be taken away from among you. You are not saying that this person, get him out of the church, is polluting the church, get him out, that's not your, what you are saying. For I verily, as absent in the body, I'm not among you now, but present in the spirit. In the spirit, I'm among you. The church of God is one. I've judged already as though I were present concerning him that has so done this day. I've concluded my judgment. You are dealing with mercy. Eh, you people know what I'm merciful. Paul completed his judgment. 
over that matter. He was Paul among them? But he got it by God. The Lord directed him. The Lord assured him. The Lord told him what to do. And he said, In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus, anytime you're gathered together, the power of the Lord Jesus is there. I am there by faith. To deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Del is it not sin he wants to commit? Deliver him to Satan to go and commit sin. Satan will deal with him. He will go and know that Satan is not a father actually. And the, the dealing torture Satan will give him as a sinner under him may make him to repent and seek God. That sin he refuses to confess, he will now confess it and get salvation. That is the way of God to harden people. Yes. Your glorying is not good. Why are you glorying? A sinner is among you, you're glorying. You see the sinner, you greet him, bro, how are you? Sister, hey, how are you? How are your children? You're dealing with somebody that is destroying the work of God? That is destroying the name of Jesus? That is taking people to hell? Has initiated so many people to witchcraft? It's because he has not initiated you. Or maybe it's your sister in, the, in witchcraft. That's why you're greeting yourselves. Otherwise, the church met together. The church sat in the judgment and declared something on to, somebody unto Satan. You are making a friend. You say, don't bother. It is just church. That is the, you know myself and you, we don't have any problem. In fact, it's church. The Lord will doom your soul. Because the mercy of God over you, you don't know. You don't know the mercy of God. If the Lord had allowed that person in your life, will you be living even to be talking? How many have died that could not talk because they're in hell now? The person cleared their lives. And yet you say, it's not me, me. I don't have. Or else you say, I don't believe the church. And you think you are a child of God. Which child of God? You left Jesus too long ago. The Lord left you to check whether you will come back. You refuse to come back. Otherwise, how can the church of God sit together and the Lord was there and gave up a decree. You say you don't belong there. Yeah, I'm, uh, no, it's me. I, I, I don't believe. Until Jesus will come and tell me himself. Proud boy. Proud woman. Jesus will come and tell you. How much will you pay him? What sacrifice will you he, he, sacrifice to him? Solomon, Solomon sacrificed a thousand oxen and Jesus came to him how, you, you will sacrifice how much you think our God is there cheaply to be coming to people you are not even lucky that you are in the church of God I was telling people the percentage that is lost Christianity is only 34% 34 in the world 66% are not Christians are you not even lucky to be among the 34 then 17 and a half percent are Catholics it's 16 and a half that are Protestants and other, other churches. Are you not lucky that you are even among the Protestants? Even the, among the Protestants, those who are not Catholics, even how many are Jehovah's Witnesses? How many are Church of Satan? Olumba, Olumba, and others. Mercy of God! And you are so stubborn to be saying unto Jesus, talk to me myself. Who are you? What's your name? Did you create yourself? Why did you look down look on your creator? You're directing him? Did you, did you ask him to burn you to this world? Why are you stubborn? Because judgment is not speedily executed? So, that is it. Now, he continues. You have verse 6. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leavened the whole lump? Watch out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lamb, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote unto you in an epistle, not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous or extortioners 
or with idolaters. For then my sin is go out of the world. When I told you, be ye not unequally yoked with unbelievers. And I told you, don't join unbelievers. Don't make friends with unbelievers. Don't transact in any form. I'm talking, I'm not talking about the sinners in the world that because you go to market to buy from them. If I say don't go to them at all, you must, they are the ones selling essential goods in the market. The drivers that carry you from one place to another, are they all children of God? They are sinners. What about the ones, the teachers that teach you in school and the children you are teaching in school, the students you are teaching, or you are a student on the, on the lecturers, are they all Christians? If I said that you have nothing to do with sinners, then it means you just have to leave the world. But I am saying, verse 11, but now I have written unto you that, I mean, not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, a thief, a covetous, or an idolater, witchcraft, a railer, quarrelsome man, a drunkard, bribe taking, bribe given, extortioner, and so on. With such a one, no, not to eat. It's not that somebody excommunicated from the church. Say, ah, today is my birthday. You say, hey, happy birthday. Cry, human beings. How they trouble God. Who, you are saying happy birthday to who? A person is communicating for witchcraft. You are trying to show the person you are on his, on his or her side, be, not God's side. You are not in the sight of the church. You don't bother. Then you are like him or you are like her. You are together in the same company of witchcraft. That's why a thief is greeting a thief, although the other thief is in prison. He's still keeping the war going. That's what you show. Otherwise, are you in your senses? Look at it in the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 19, verse 1. Second Chronicles, chapter 19. From verse 1 to verse 3. See what the Lord says there. Yes. He says. The Bible says, And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. Returned from where? From Ahab. He, 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 did, he, did, he did business with Ahab. He joined Ahab to go and fight in war. Look at it in chapter 18, verse 28. 2 Chronicles 18, 28. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and I will go to the battle, but put thou on thy robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself and they went to the battle. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots that were with him, saying, Fight ye not with small or great, save only only with the king of Israel. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat that they said, because Ahab deceived him. He said, oh, I will not dress like a king. You dress like a king. They will see you as Ahab. The children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. It is the king of Israel. They thought. Therefore, they compass him, ab compass him about to fight. But Jehoshaphat cried out oh God, oh God. <laughs> I'm telling you people ignorance can kill people and they not helped him and God moved them to depart from him now in chapter 19 verse 1 and Jehoshaphat the king of Judah returned he to his house in peace to Jerusalem he escaped dead and Jehu the son of Han Hanani the seer went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Should this thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrought upon thee from before the Lord. 
You are going to somebody that hates Jesus. It's initiating people, fighting the cause of Christ, cursing but sliding. He said, hey, happy birthday. Cry. The Lord pity his people. Why, why did he not destroy Jehoshaphat? I'm a verse 3. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee, in that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land and hast prepared thine heart to seek God. That's why he spared you. Otherwise, he was angry against you. You who did those happy birthday, God is angry with you. God is angry. Go and appease him. When fellow friends in evil are doing happy birthday, what made you to join them? What made you to join them? Join? In, are you encouraging the, 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 the sinner? Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 3 to 6. Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 3 to verse 6 the Bible says an Ammonite or a Moabite, or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord even to their 10th generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever because they met you not with bread and with water in the way when ye came forth out of Egypt and because they hired against thee Balaam, the son of Baal, of Petal, of Mesopotamia, to curse thee. If you see what these evil people are doing against the church, you will be praying constantly that God destroy their work. God destroy their work. God remove them. God remove them. See these people, the Ammonite, the Moabite, hired Balaam. How many people died? 23,000 Israel died by hiring Balaam to give them counsel to kill the children of Israel. Now, what said the Lord? That verse 6. I mean verse 5. Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto that Balaam, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, because the Lord thy God loved thee. Verse 6. Are you there? One, two, go. Thou shalt not seek their peace no, their prosperity all their days, forever. That's how strong the Lord is. Are you more righteous than God? The church has communicated to man. You will not allow the man to be ashamed. You won't desert that person to allow her to be ashamed. So that you will see that Satan is not that good as she thought. Satan is not that good as he thought. Can she have friends with Satan and with the children of God too? She has been identified. Her days are over. Withdraw. That is the word of God. Stand to it. Stand on the side of the true church in their decision and judgment. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10 and verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10 and verse 11 now I beseech you brethren by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that ye all speak the same thing and that there be no, no divisions among you but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same judgment joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment we are one whatever stand the godly leadership has taken even if you say you don't understand go and join them if you walk in and the church is standing on group do you need to understand they say you come go go to that other group or do you need to ask why who said it who is directing you know you have come to where leadership is and these people are standing here by leadership where they direct you to go you just go be one man of fighting with the church and say the church is wrong is my sister is my brother what type of do you really understand what you're saying it's my wife do you understand what you're saying my catch up seven do you understand that thing which you are saying verse 5 
it's, it goes trust ye not in a friend don't say he is my friend I know him if a matter comes up strong on your friend speak but stop where your power stops you cannot tell what is in the heart of your friend you cannot tell what your friend did yesterday you cannot tell what your friend did this morning trust ye not in a friend don't be for total on a friend put ye not confidence in a guide even your teacher your guide you don't know what is inside man look at on the outward appearance but the Lord look at inside please stop where your jurisdiction stops keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom your wife is the one lying in your bosom hold your peace you don't know what that is inside that woman you don't know the plan there was a coup in Sierra Leone one of the coup plotters was in the church nobody knew did his service well when coup happened and they were trying to they were calling this man is responsible saying, what we know him you know him did you know what is in his heart do you know what he was planning stop at where you stop please you are a short man raise up your hand try to stand on your toes that's the all the height you can provide stop there otherwise you will fall down I'm telling you if you do another thing you will collapse because you don't know don't go beyond your your sphere and again the Bible tells us verse 6 for the son dishonored the father the daughter in law rises up against her mother and the daughter in law against her mother in law a man's enemies are the mean of his own house you can you defend it to people in your house because of relation can you tell the enemies in your house and say their relations you are learning the world submit to the world submit to church leadership honor and obey them obey them that have the rule over you it is a way of your going to heaven it shows you are righteous and holy otherwise you are not in the sheepfold let's rise up upon our feet and thank him make me holy make me holy make me holy O Lord, in the morning, in the night, any time you may come, make me holy, O Lord, make me humble, O Jesus, I want to be humble. Take yourself to God in prayer now. You have come in to be a Christian. This is the way. How to behave yourself in the church of God. How to behave yourself the church of the living God the pillar and ground of the truth humble yourself go the way of holiness thank you father just worship God I thank you for your presence thank you Lord you must teach the remnant the faithful world 
that will serve them. The engrafted world that is able to serve their souls. Teach the remnant. Others have gone. Church collapsed. Worship. Worship. Thank you, Jesus. Let the spirit of grace rest upon your children. The Lord forgive them for the foolishness of their lives. Jehoshaphat was forgiven. He was sincere. He really meant to serve the Lord, but he was ignorant. Thank you. Forgive your children. Sincere and ignorant. You will, you will change. Rebellion makes you like Satan. You will go to hell where he is going to. Thank you, Jesus. 